yeah, that was good. And it was nice they only have eight tables, you know, because they're spread out because of COVID. Went to this one so so Because Harold's birthday's in February. So. So, and then I bought myself a gluten free carrot cake from Sheila Hubens. The whole thing? Oh, only it's a little, I mean, it's a little bit. Did you do that? Sheila Hubens does some gluten free stuff. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay, I'm still letting people in, so I can do that as we go. All right. Um, morning, everybody. We're calling you to order at quarters of 831. And we have minutes from January 18th and 25th and, and 26th. And 27. <laughs> we have a lot of meetings and 28. A lot of meetings. It seemed like a lot of meetings lately, and it was. So, do we have a motion to approve these? So moved. Motion by Hamilton, second by Gresh. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. All right, let's so start on the <clears throat> Not Who? Uh, no, not on the engineer yet. Okay, discuss and consider consultation board recommendations item two. So during our budget sessions, we've had a lot of discussion about this, and um, the compensation board had recommended three and a half, and trying to look at the overall budget. So what the supervisors came up with a two percent, and that's kind of some counties around us are doing one, some are doing one and a half, one's doing two and a half. So, um, any discussion from either of you? No, I think, I think we've discussed enough and we've kind of prepared everybody that we were only looking at a 2% increase. Um, I don't think we really need to have the uh, three percent three and a half percent that everybody said um, that the compensation board said but i do think employees need a little bit of money um, as a as a pay raise for the next coming fiscal year okay do we have a motion mm -hmm. uh, motion by Gresh for a second 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 by hamilton any discussion all in favor Hi. Just have the front and back signing in each side. So, I have not signed one yet. You're still on. You're on now. Um, Hampton considering statement of clean septic and excavation LLC disposal system and contractor's license. Um, I have no problem with this. Uh, Dan Miller sent out an email saying that he didn't have a problem with it being renewed. So um, I would move that we approve this. License. Okay. Um, okay. Motion by Hamilton, seconded by Gish. Um, any discussion? All in favor? No. Uh, okay. Discuss and consider 2080 agreement between Jefferson County Environmental Health Department and the County Environmental Health. And Dan sent us an email to uh, table at Grizzly County's meeting later this week. Right. 
So I make a motion to table this. Um, Second. Second. Okay, motion by Sam Close to table, second by Hamilton. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Scott, good morning. Meet with County Engineer. Hello, can you hear me? Can you speak up just a little? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. So um, most of what the uh, crews have been doing is working on uh, snow and ice on gravel roads and on paved roads. So they were out Sunday um, and the roads, I, I thought the county roads looked pretty good this morning. Uh, the Pitt County paved roads. Uh, it was kind of a wet, heavy snow, but uh, let's see. So the we've also um, gotten in a couple hundred tons of salt and mixed some of that with uh, with sand, of course, and so we've got a pretty good supply of of uh, mixed sand and salt right now and uh, salt as well. Um, that's about all that I have on my report. <laughs> okay. I think, I think along with your report, uh, maybe you'll have a couple of comments about the meeting that we had with uh, the farmers here last week. Um, what did you feel about that? And how did you think that meeting went? I was kind of hoping for some more comment on things like bridges and, and uh, oh, I don't know, various things about gravel roads and the bridges on those roads. Um, maybe some comments about the paved roads, but Mostly they seem to be concentrating in at that meeting on uh, um, oh, what roads that we redo by uh, pulling in the rock that's gone off the roads over the years and, and redoing the crown and putting more rock down on. And, uh, you know, these roads get wider and wider all the time. And so, um, they they tend to get flat with no no crown and uh, and crowd the ditches. Um, so we we've uh, made an attempt to get some of those roads put back up to uh, a better shape. And oh, let's see. There was a comment about putting m making a map that shows roads that we're going to do that to and. And right now, my understanding is we don't really have any plans on doing any more of those for a while. So there's really <laughs> none to show on a map. A plan and potential timeline. So we kind of know when we get questions, because this is one of the most frequent topics we hear about um, from the rural community is, you know, how much narrower the roads are. And I know you're just taking them back to the original width, but yet with farm equipment so big, it seems to be a, a running thing. Yeah, we're we're not even taking them back to the original widths because those were like 24, 26 feet wide. And uh, <clears throat> my aim is to have them up at least 28 feet wide. That's what we show whenever we do uh, those tanker cars is a 28 foot top. Um, and that's that's what all of, all of the ones that we've done will be um, in a short amount of time, at least the 28 feet, even though the last one was meant to be constructed at 27, but that was because it was gonna end up being uh, 28 fairly soon anyway. Um, but as far as I know, we don't have anything in 
the planning stages to do that. Well, all we'll be doing is cleaning ditches on on those kinds of roads now. Um, at that meeting, um, we discussed coming up with criteria. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, well, one of the criteria we're going to be looking at, I mean, the criteria we're going to be looking at for one type of road operation is um, for roads that will have that um, base stabilization done to them. Mm -hmm. And the, the closer we have to having a good crown and, and uh, having um, drainage taken care of so we don't have to immediately dig up dig up a culvert or something in the middle of where we just did base stabilization. Um, so some of the criteria would be traffic counts. Uh, some of it would be is the road ready to have that done to it or do we need to do more work on it before? And I mean we want to get started on some roads uh, as soon as we have the equipment and maybe even uh, borrow some of the equipment that we need one time when we don't even have all of our own. Um, we, ha we have the, uh, oh, we couldn't borrow the equipment before because we didn't have uh, the large loader and now we have that. So we can borrow a couple of items of our two or three equipment items from another county even before we get our uh, road hog and be able to do some work, get some practice in, and then when we get our road hog, um, we'll, we'll be better at using it too. So yeah, traffic and how the road condition is, you know, is it, is it ready to have base stabilization on it? I mean, we have some roads that we've worked on that, uh, that make it ready and we'll have some more roads. Well, we have some other roads that are pretty well ready without having had a lot of recent work on them. But um, so basically travel and, and the condition the road is, is it suitable to, to have that work done on without uh, wasting Wasting our time. Okay. And if, and if in our other meetings we have that people come up with some other criteria, then uh, we can build on our list. Okay. Scott? Okay. Anything else, Scott? I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Uh, number four, discuss and consider step increases for free charger department employees. Mark. We, uh, we got these submitted to us and given to us uh, the last time we met together. Um, we chose to wait till now. But the three employees are, um, let's see, Christy Connor, who would move to uh, Treasurer's Universal Clerk. Um, we have uh, Allison Nicholson, who will also move up one step, and Cody Crew, who will move up one step. So I would make a motion that we approve all three of these step increases. Okay, second. Okay, motion by Hamilton, second by Gersh. Any discussion? I'll just say that uh, we were provided with more data and detailed information than the last time this was brought to us, um, that it is indeed in line with some other um, salaries um, within the building. So, um, my discussion. All right. All in favor? Um. So, Um, the committee reports. 
Um, I am still part of the um, DCAT committee. Their meeting is, was scheduled for February 2nd. Um, they are not having a meeting, so I won't be at a DCAT meeting this week. Susie is also on that with me. Um, and she's, she's going to get uh, brought into it a little bit more as soon as we start having a meeting consistently, but there's been so many different things happen to uh, different committee members and the chairman of the committee that uh, we've had to, to put it off for this month. So, um, and again, then we had that meeting with uh, the farmers uh, as a committee meeting. And um, so, so I think we're all ready to go with that. Now, did you have two copies of that? No. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think uh, it was very interesting watch, watching and being part of all the budget meetings we had last week. I believe we had five. And uh, I will say the Farm Bureau meeting on the 26th was very, uh, it was a, a very good start, and we opened a lot of some good communication between those folks and ourselves. The ISAC thing we had on the 27th was. I was gonna, good. We were all on the ISAC has a annual supervisor meeting. It's typically in Des Moines, but it was virtual this year. And so um, we were all able to listen to that. And it was very, got a lot of good information. The Chief Justice spoke to us and she was very knowledgeable. And um, we had given them ISAC some feedback and you could tell that he had talked to them about, you know, they're taking up a lot of space, you know, in the courthouse for the court, which is fine, but it gets to a point where maybe we just need to have some discussion. And she was open and after some follow-up, I think we have potential to meet with our own at some point. Yeah. So um, we need to talk more about that at some point, what we would say if we get to meet with our own um, judge mm -hmm. in the area. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'd like to provide space, but it gets to a point where it's really getting to be a challenge in the courthouse. And then you get to the records and all of that. So um, let's see. That was kind of the main thing that jumped yeah. out at me. I don't know, topic-wise. Uh, they gave a legislative update. Um, so some other things. Um, I had a lot of different meetings, but nothing ready for prime time yet. Yeah. It's um, just working, trying to collect information on a, a lot on some budget things we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, so from there on Friday, there was the annual general diversion update. And I know, uh, Chauncey, you were on that. If you have any any insights, I just I think Chris Shaw said they did like 455 bookings. I think Bart, you're on if that's what she said. And then 81 of those were mental health related. And they were able to do 162 screens. Um, Rochelle was from Optime, and so 50% of those. Uh, had mental health um, issues of those screened. And so what jail diversion does is try to connect people with community services. Yeah, but yet it's the type of thing that people have to want to participate. So um, it works for some folks. Do you have anything to add to that, Chauncey? Or Bart, you were there. Alrighty. Um, public comments. Public. Hey, it's Chris. I sent you something in the chat. Oh, oh missed it. Sorry. That's okay. Do you want me to give you an update now? Can I give an update, please? Yes, yes. you may. Okay, let me turn my heater off just a second. Okay, sorry I couldn't jump on the meeting when it started. It was a little crazy 
here. Um, huh, okay, so um, I'm Chris Sestel. I'm Jefferson County Public Health Administrator. For anybody that's on this, not that I don't know. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick update where we're at currently uh, with the county and the vaccine allocation and how that's rolling out. Um, let's just say the last week has been very, very challenging and very difficult and full of frustration on the side of the public. Um, I know people are very uh, frustrated um, because they meet criteria. Anybody age 65 and older meets criteria to receive the vaccine. Just because you meet criteria to receive the vaccine doesn't mean that you're number one on the list, right? Because we do not have enough vaccine. That's the bottom line. We do not have enough vaccine. So today we start um, phase 1B, tier one. And in that group, we have first responders, firefighters, police, um, correctional officers, then we also have the pre-K, the entire school staff in daycare, preschool, and uh, you know, other child care uh, uh, workers and providers. So I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot of people in that, uh, in that group. Um, I will tell you that we were able to uh, offer vaccine to the, to the first responders, firefighters, law enforcement. So those individuals are, uh, were given the opportunity a couple weeks ago to receive vaccine because I, had, I still had vaccine from phase 1A. I checked with the state and I didn't have to reallocate that. So those individuals were taken care of. Um, <clears throat> we are currently administering um, vaccine to individuals over the age of 65. Um, we still have those folks from last week that uh, when we opened that up, that 180 doses. Um, so we're still trying to uh, vaccinate those individuals. In addition to that, we are also giving the booster doses, meaning the second dose, to individuals that received it in December. So like our, our phase 1A, our healthcare workers, are now, it's now time to receive their second dose. So um, we have been giving, given anywhere from, I think the most of the, like today, we're administering 40 doses of vaccine. Each appointment takes 30 minutes, okay? Because by the time you sign people in, they fill out the paperwork, they get the vaccine, you have to um, observe them for 15 minutes post-injection, and then you have to clean the area. It takes about 30 minutes to administer and to do it the correct way by maintaining social distancing and all of those other things that you need to, you need to do. So. I have been trying my best to provide information and give updates in a timely manner, both on Facebook and by uh, local media. Um, uh, it, it doesn't matter what I say or, or how I try to provide the information. Um, everybody's an authority, everybody's a professional, and everybody knows how to do my job much better than I do. So I think, you know, hey, with that being said, I'm just gonna kick back and let the free for all happen. No, that's a joke. What I wanna say is we are not making a list of individuals because that list would be too large to manage. And then people would call and say, what number am I on the list? So they would continually call and it would create more panic than it does by just waiting until vaccine is available and then calling. Um, I know that our federal pharmacy program will be turned on here in the next probably two weeks. I don't know what day. I know from our Zoom meeting on Friday with the state health department, um, I think they were gonna make an announcement then, but uh, something has happened at the federal level. So I have talked to the, I've talked to the pharmacies and they were all listening to that same Zoom meeting information on Fridays. Um, so what's gonna happen is big corporations like Hy-Vee, Walgreens, other large pharmacies, and then pharmacy, um, Iowa has a group of pharmacies that are together, and I can't remember the letters, but it's a group of pharmacies um, that are, they're all gonna receive vaccine from the federal program, meaning that vaccine will be shipped directly to those pharmacies for them to administer, okay? Get notification when that happens? No, that's out of our, we don't get that information, no. We don't get that information. It's totally bypassed. It's totally bypassed from us um, at the local level. Um, it'll be a ship direct to the pharmacies from the feds. Um, the only way we'll know, is my understanding, the only way we will know is uh, 
um, if they tell us, I mean, if it's put in iris, we might know that way. I think there's still some things that we don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, so, and keep in mind, every pharmacy that's gonna offer this vaccine has to follow the same guidance that we're following. Okay, once you open a vial of Moderna, you have to administer all 10 doses within six hours. Okay, you have to social distance. So they're still gonna have to make appointments. They're still gonna have to do all of the things that we're doing. I think the thing is, um, and, and we're gonna allocate, we will allocate some doses to our hospital, to our health center when we can, but I don't have enough doses to do that. I, I don't wanna give them 25 or 40 doses when we're doing okay internally, I just don't have the doses to administer. I got here about 20 after seven this morning and some of the nurses, two of the nurses were already here at 7.15. The phones were ringing off the hook before we ever opened. There were six people standing outside our door at 7.30. My staff had to come in the back door. This is the same thing that happened with H1N1. You guys have heard me say that, um, you know, I've already requested increased patrol and the law enforcement guys, thank you very much, law enforcement, have been doing increased patrol for us. Um, so this is the reality of what we're dealing with. And I don't know, no matter what I say on Facebook or however I release the information, people are like, you need more phone lines. You need to hire more staff. You need to do this. It doesn't matter. Why? Because I don't have a thousand doses of vaccine. That's why if I did, we would open up a big point of dispensing and vaccinate a thousand people in one day. I don't have that option. So I, I don't know. I just need for you guys to understand where I'm at and how to share this information and to support me. And I know the supervisors have done an amazing job supporting me in this role and um, continue to do so. I know Brett's on and, and thank you, Brett Farrell, for all your support. Um, Every county is currently looking the same as ours. Some counties are using their code red system to register people. Other counties have a different mechanism to register people electronically. That's great. Again, though, there's still a demographics of people that don't have internet, that don't use electronic devices like that to register. And on the flip side of that is when those appointments are full, boom, it's shut off. You can't, you can't register any more people. So then they're going to call anyway. So Lisco called me last week and wanted to know if our phones were working. They called me on the landline and I go, yeah. They're like, well, we got, we got a phone call that your phones aren't working. And I go, our phones are working. We just can't get it all answered. We can't get them all answered. And we had over a hundred voicemails in the queue. So again, people need to put this in perspective. They need to understand that they're not the only person over 65 years of age that meets criteria for this vaccine. I think I'm done. I don't know. It's been a rough morning and it's only not even nine o'clock yet. Is anybody no. serving Bloody Marys? That's a joke. We love you. <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> you know, Can I what you're doing and yes, we understand and support um, the processes. Um, and it's just a, what it is what it is right now until you get enough vaccine, you can only do what you can do. I know. I know. And I, and it's not going to matter when our pharmacies are, when that pharmacy uh, program is, is turned on either because um, there's still going to be not enough, there's still going to be a greater demand than there is a supply. This happened with H1N1. It's, it's the same situation. But the thing of it is, um, with H1N1, those individuals over the age of 65 didn't meet criteria because um, they had already been exposed to that in the early 70s when swine flu came around the first time. So they had some natural antibodies. But And then at the end of that, we ended up throwing hundreds of doses away. I don't want to see that happen. Um, I know Johnson & Johnson is uh, going to apply for emergency use authorization sometime in the next two to three weeks. Um, it is a one dose series. The, the efficacy is not the same as Moderna or Pfizer. But again, you have to remember that's just one, that's a one dose series where Pfizer and Moderna are a two dose series. Uh, Pfizer's 21 days apart and Moderna is uh, 28, 21 and 28 days respectively. But Pfizer is the one that has to have the ultra cold storage. 
So have you heard yet how often, you know, once everybody gets vaccinated, how often you'll need a will it be like the annual flu shot type of thing, or does anybody even know yet? You know, they've had discussion about that. Dr. Garvey and Dr. Padati have discussed that at our at our Zoom meetings on Tuesdays. And I just don't think we know yet. Um, I think this virus is still new enough that we don't know. Um, I do know that we're seeing some long-term complications um, that people, I, I shouldn't say complications, long-term health issues, um, like, like they might have... Um, some long-term breathing issues or a cardiac issue that popped up when they didn't have that before, uh, before they had this virus. So, but that doesn't happen to everybody. I think in a year or so, we'll know more information. I mean, we get boosters for lots of things. We get boosters annually for flu, um, you know, Hep B is a three shot series, Hep A is a two shot series. Um, you know, I think we just don't know yet. And, and with the, with the virus mutating, which every virus has the ability to mutate, not just COVID-19. And if you listen to the news, they act like they act like that COVID-19 is the only virus that can mutate. That's not true. Every virus can mutate and then we're faced with a new strain of that virus. So viruses are smart and that's what they do, mutate. Can I answer anything else? Yeah. No, you do an outstanding job, Chris. I think that there's a lot of pressure on you right now, like you said, from misunderstanding of people that are uh, wanting this at uh, everybody else's expense. I'm first in line. Everybody else needs to get behind me kind of thing. And I, I think you do a wonderful job. Your staff uh, works their tails off all the time. Um, they're, they're wonderful as well. And I think that, uh, you know, for all the stresses, you guys have ran this very smoothly to this point. It's just people need to understand that there are only so many doses that come and not everybody can get in the door. And that having a list of who has and who hasn't as far as calling in and trying to get yourself a spot in line just is not feasible at this time. So... Right. In the, yeah. in the future, it very well could be. It's just not, it, we just can't handle that right now. I don't think anybody can. And I think the one thing, the other point of clarification, I just want to say this one more time is we never know week to week how many doses we're going to be allocated and we don't know for sure when it's going to arrive. We have a guesstimate on when it can arrive, but here's the deal. It's like when you call the, you know, Mediacom guys, we are gonna show up at your house from this time to this time. We never know for sure because logistics, the weather plays a role, um, all of those things impact delivery. And I do not wanna set appointments when vaccine is not on site because we don't have the ability, we don't wanna to have to call 100 people and reschedule. That We don't have time for that and that creates even more frustration. So yeah, we have to wait till that vaccine is on site before we're gonna make appointments. So you guys know how to find me if you need me. Um, I appreciate your time and I appreciate this opportunity to give a quick heads up. I'm going to hop off if, unless you need something. Thank you. Bye. Any other public comments? All right. Uh, allow claims and approve reports. So moved. Okay. Uh, moved by Hamilton, seconded by Gresh. All in favor? Um, okay. Use and properties. Um, we've had a couple of uh, bids come in for uh, cleanup on a property. Um, the previous bidder had lowered their bid uh, by about $2,500. Um, the second bidder that placed the bid is even higher than the first bid that we got. So I, I think that we'll make a decision quickly here as far as moving ahead with with the one bid. But I don't want to say who it was or how much yeah. it was uh, other than what I've already alluded to. Right. Um and appreciate any input from our county attorneys on that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Otherwise, that's that's about where we are right there with the nuisance properties. I know there's a few of them that are still moving through the court. Is that correct, Pat? Uh, correct. Uh, I I looked the other day. I think there's only maybe two that are left yeah. in the court system. Um, and uh, I sent you an email about one last week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no. No. I would move to adjourn. I second that motion. Okay. Well, I thanks everybody. Uh, thank you.